So yeah, they are very similar. Um, I built it in Excel, so you can see it. I'm not sure how many levels down you went, but this is how you would want to structure your work. And when you go to take the test, you will have one question like this where you have all these boxes to fill in, starting from the balance and then moving forward. Typically, it's two rows, maybe seven boxes or something, eight boxes. So you're not building a whole big table. One of the things I find hard about this class is that I'm constantly in the tension between what you have to do for the test, which to me seems sometimes kind of pointless because in real life, if you're going to do a payoff table calculation, you're going to do it in Excel. You're not going to do it on paper. That's insane. Um, so, and you will do this in the project. That's the reason why I think the projects are more valuable in a lot of ways, because they're, they're helping you practice what you would really do in real life. Um, so, yeah. I don't know what you, how you interpreted the question, whether you went here or here or here, but you can see the numbers and see whether they match up. What I did was I took it and I ran it out until it finished, which was after 48 months. And the reason I say 48 months is because we started at zero and so Payment has happened 48 times, even though this is line 47. And that's a four year loan, right? So that was a hidden detail that I did not put into the question, but basically, you know, at this rate, paying 351.55, Ben would pay this debt off in four years, exactly. 48 payments. A Couple of things to think about before we look at Benito um, I want to look at this ratio here. The finance charge to the payment. Okay, so I'm looking at the finance charge compared to the payment. I'm making a ratio. And that's the number I get. I've turned it into a percent. What is the thing that allows me to turn it to a percentage? What's the question that I have to answer before I can turn something to a percentage? Can I turn all ratios into percentages? Um, I don't think so because there has to be the only time you would turn it into a percentage if it doesn't start with a percentage, right? Remember, it has to do with part to part versus part to whole. Which one is the kind that we can turn into percentages? Part to whole. That's right. So, this I've already turned this into a percentage. Can you see why I might consider this a part to whole ratio? Is the finance charge a part of my payment? Yes. Part of my payment is going to the finance charge. It's not all going to my balance. So my balance doesn't go down by 351.55, right? If we go from here to here, it doesn't go down that much. It goes down about $300. And the reason is that the finance charge had to come out. So as we're thinking about what this means, you can use a structure like this, 13.9% of whole is the part, okay? So how would you say this in a sentence, using finance charge and payment to make the sentence more clear? I don't wanna say whole and part, I wanna be specific about what I'm talking about. I made a ratio of the finance charge to the payment, so what is happening in this situation? Interpreting ratios goes all the way through the course. 
because it's a way of understanding situations and talking about them. This is a big one. It connects to XL7. So what's the hole in this situation? The hole is the number on the bottom. So what's the hole in this situation? Would it be the um, the total amount being borrowed? No. Let's go back and look at this ratio. D3 to F3. So part to whole. Oh, okay. So what's um, the whole in this situation? The payment, 351.55. So 13.9% of the payment is what? What was the part we're talking about? Oh, the, the finance charge. Okay, so I'm not trying to write a sentence that uses the 351.55 and the 48.90, right? I'm not trying to say 13.9% of 351.55 is 48.90. That's true. It's not a false statement. It's just not, that doesn't clarify what's happening here, right? Okay. And this sentence, I think we could go a little further and try to make it clear that if we're talking about the finance charge, that's the fee, the fee that's going to the bank, right? So I could say this sentence a little differently that emphasizes the fact that 13.9% of my money is going to the bank. 13.9% of my payment going to the bank as a fee. Okay, so that's what's happening here, right? It's a, it's a good application of ratios and interpretation and really trying to make sense out of it. And I want you to notice that 13.9% is not the same as 3.75%, right? You might say to yourself, well, 3.5% is my APR, so 3.5% is what the bank is getting. No, the bank is getting almost 14% here. Right? You're making a payment, they're taking 14% of it, the rest of it's going to your debt. Remember that if you had a wealthy grandma, right, then you could just say, grandma, can you lend me some money and I'll pay you back? And she says, sure, no problem. You know, and then you're not paying any interest, right? So you just, when you pay her back, you just pay her back a little bit at a time, right? But you're not, you're not paying her a fee, you're just giving her her money back. Banks don't work like that, right? They're businesses, so they have to earn money. How do they earn money? They charge you fees. The fee is wrapped up in this thing called the interest and the interest rate. One of the things that's interesting about loans and loan repayment is that at the front end of the loan, the bank is making more money as a percentage than they are in the back end, right? Let's look at that same ratio at the back end. Only a dollar of interest at the very end of the loan. So this is $1.09 out of my final payment. That's 0.3%, right? That's really close to 0%. They're making a very small amount of money at the end. In fact, for the whole last year, go back 12 months, they've been making, you know, what is this? This is 3%. Now, this is where it finally got into the range that we were kind of talking about my APR. But for the last year, they've been making less than that. It kept, kept going down. Especially in regards to mortgages, this is a big deal because banks are continually encouraging people to refinance, which puts them back at the beginning of the process. And the beginning of the process is where the bank is making the most money, right? Now, I'm not saying refinancing is a bad thing. You can refinance your student loan debt, your car debt, your house debt, and you can get a lower rate great. You should also do the work to figure out whether if there's fees associated with that, whether that kind of works out in the end, right? Because 
It could be that you're paying fees to have somebody refinance something for you. And then that ends up costing you more money in the end because you went back to the beginning and you're paying more up front. All right, now let's talk about Benito. So just to check your numbers here with Benito, I don't know how far you went. What do you notice about Benito's situation just to, at a glance? I mean, obviously the payment was higher. It wasn't that much higher. It was like 30 bucks more a month. So it didn't seem like pretty similar. Go back to Ben. And then we'll go back to Benito. They both started off at the same balance. Benito's making a slightly higher payment monthly. What else do you notice is different? His uh, finance charge is more higher. That's right. And considerably higher. I mean, it's double, more than double. And that's uh, a reflection of his rate, right? 8.75 compared to 3.75. Well, 8.75 is more than double, 3.75. Right, it's probably proportional, it's exactly proportional because this is just uh, take the APR times the balance divided by 12. So the fact that it's more than double, it's just a reflection of how 8.75 is more than double 3.75. Right, I don't know if you watched the credit score video, but I wanted to keep coming back to this point. Of course, this is something that I care deeply about this idea of fairness and justice. Right, I don't know about Benito's history and Ben's history and why one of them got a 3.75% APR, one of them got an 8.75% APR. But the immediate consequence of that is that Benito is paying more money for the exact same service, right? Now, d discrimination is the idea that, you know, one person gets to do something and the other person doesn't, or they have different conditions under which they can do it. And it's perfectly legal in, a, in the banking system to use credit scores to say, oh, you're a risky borrower and I don't want to give you that money or I don't want to give you the money at the same rate as this other person who's a really worthy borrower. Um, but it's problematic, you know, it's not, it, it leads to inequities. And I use Benito as a, you know, a representation maybe of a Hispanic person who doesn't have the same history in the country. Um, you know, maybe they don't have the same interactions with the banking system because they don't have the same trust or they don't have the same documentation and maybe they just get a higher rate because they don't have that same credit score, same history. Okay, let's do this calculation one more time with Benito. We're taking the finance charge and we're comparing it to the payment. Go ahead and do that ratio and turn it into a percentage because this is a part to whole ratio and see if you can make a sentence out of it just to practice. And then we'll compare our answers. Yeah, 29.4. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's give me another decimal here. Yep, 29.4%. All right, and then making a sentence out of it. Uh, 29.4% of the payment is going to the bank as a fee. So again, it may be simply proportional. I mean, this is about double 14%. Right, but it's almost 30% of this payment. And again, at the end, it's gonna come down to be close to 0%. Just in case you're wondering, this is also a four year repayment plan. So they both get it done in the same amount of time. Obviously Benito's gonna pay more because he's paying more money every month. $30 a month, almost. So another way to quantify the question of what's the difference for these two borrowers, and the one, it's really the central question of the financial section is, how much does this loan cost Ben and Benito? And what can I do in this table to answer that question? 
what would I do using Excel to be able to answer the question, how much does it cost Ben and Benito? You could add a, um, get the sum of all the finance charges. Right. We're going to use the sum formula and we're going to look at that finance charge column. Okay, so this loan costs Ben about $1,200. All right, let's go look at Benito. Same thing, go down here. Let's see, I don't have to use my mouse. I'm gonna start from D3. I'm gonna go down to D50. So equals sum D3 colon D50. So almost $3,000. Same service, same product, same everything, different interest rate. The interest rate obscures the cost of the loan. I'm not saying it's an evil conspiracy, but it just seems to me like that's a problem when people are making financial decisions about things that they're going to do. If you don't know how much it costs, how can you make a wise decision about whether it's worth doing it? 